In a lot of cases, video games need realism, but there's certain stuff that, while it just doesn't fly in any world that adheres to the laws of physics, for instance. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 video game things that defy logic, but are tons of fun. Starting off at number 10, it's Resident Evil's safe rooms. Here's a thing that exists purely for player convenience. Why are certain rooms in a zombie apocalypse safe? What makes them so special that zombies and monsters can't get in? Nothing. They just can't. And that's not even mentioning the item boxes. How do they all share inventory? Is there some kind of underground network of tubes? Who really knows? But it's convenient. It is that. They're not like the safe rooms in something like Left 4 Dead either. These aren't sturdy metal doors that you can lock or anything and hide behind. They're just normal rooms. In a lot of cases, the door can be open and nothing can come in. It's kind of weird in every game in the Resident Evil series, these exist. But it's especially funny in something like the Resident Evil 2 remake where if you're pursued by the unstoppable Mr. X and he will chase you everywhere into any place regardless of what is going on but if you walk into one of these rooms he'll just like stand outside the door and he will wait patiently for you to come out very polite boy it doesn't it doesn't make any sense that he can't get in though but having some place safe to go is nice in a game like this so we're not complaining at number nine, the fact that you can parry everything in Sekiro. Like, okay, so some of the stuff you can parry in this game is just nuts. Like, you can quote unquote parry. It's more like deflect, but you can do it with a charging bull. It's pretty crazy, but that's like the tip of the iceberg with what you can pull off in this game. Like, you can deflect the guardian ape, the thing that's like three times your size, but somehow you can parry its attacks. Or hell, like taking on the divine dragon for any instant or you can somehow absorb lightning and shoot it back at this guy as well as basically like fly yeah you're just grappling around but let's be real here you're basically flying this is a game where you're taking on mostly human-sized opponents with basically realistic weapons and fighting styles so when it deviates from that it feels super weird like you can even deflect bullets at times you're basically just a jedi in this game a jedi with a grappling hook yeah you're, you're pretty badass honestly at number eight, it's RPG battle logic. Like, there's so much about how turn-based RPGs work that it does not make any sense. Like, how over the top can they get? Sephiroth's ultimate attack in the original Final Fantasy VII has him literally destroy the entire solar system. Seriously, every planet blows up. The sun goes supernova. It is end time. A and then your party takes some damage and the fight continues. Like, it doesn't even kill you. Not to mention, what is everyone doing during all of this your people just stand there while this bizarre solar system wide apocalypse cutscene plays out like a ton of final bosses and rpgs have these like over the top ultimate moves but that one is still after all these years one of the most ridiculous which leads you to more questions like where are you i mean i know you're deep in the northern impact crater but where is everyone standing what is happening is this not your solar system like does he just destroy a solar system somewhere in the universe and draw on its power to attack i don't know it doesn't even matter physically who cares it accept it it's cool that's all that matters at number seven lost temples and shrines in pretty much any game always seem to have natural light it's a funny one you never really think about but then some person points it out and you can't escape it like there's so many games where you go to explore some temple or shrine or ruin that's been undiscovered for thousands of years but without fail it'll have like a big hole in the ceiling so you have natural light and like nobody walked by and noticed it ever it can apply to basically any game with ruins in it it happens in pretty much all all of them kind of nitpicky but seriously you usually have to find some elaborate lock to get inside these places there's usually a super dangerous entrance filled with traps and then you get inside and it's like oh there's a huge hole in the ceiling could come through there ah oh, we needed a rope for that the reason why this happens is obvious if they didn't have natural lighting they'd be pitch black i mean these places have supposedly been untouched in you know forever so there's not going to be like torches lit or anything developers also really want to have have that oomph factor with these big open vistas and you just can't do that in an unlit cave like for there to be something interesting to look at there has to be some light but i i don't know about you i i don't really want every game with a ruin in it to feel like the tomb of the giants from dark souls though like one place like that is enough for me 
At number six, real-time strategy games with transports that can hold so many units, regardless of, of size. Uh, like with the new Age of Empires coming out this year, we were just thinking about all these weird and nonsensical things that go on in real-time strategy games. Like transports can only hold so many units, regardless of their size. It's not always the case or anything, depending on the game, but it shows up enough that it's worth saying something. You can load up a transport with some little soldiers and they take up as much much space as like giant armor guys or a tank or like a war elephant or something it doesn't make a lot of sense you can carry four things in here five soldiers too much four tanks all of which are about 20 times the size of a soldier fine that's fine hell the size doesn't even really make much sense either like headquarters are often as big as four guys your barracks look like it can hold like six people tops like how are these buildings just pumping out people in tanks anyway Yes, we realize that these are art assets before you say anything like that. This is a really fun genre of games, but if you break it down to like common sense and laws of physics and stuff like that, it's not one that holds up well. But let's also just be really clear. Who really cares as long as they're enjoyable and they very much are. Like I I'm for sure playing the new Age of Empires. At number five, uh, these barriers that should be easy to get through in real life, but you can't. This one's a little more annoying than fun, but for me, it's also sometimes rather funny. Uh, you know what we're talking about, though. There's like a fence or a barrier that's blocking your way that if it were real life, you could get through or around or whatever. It's like one step above an invisible wall. And of course, it being video games, you can't just like squeeze through the bars or hop over a log. You got to complete an elaborate puzzle or take a huge dangerous detour. Like there's so many games that this kind of stuff pops into, it's crazy. With open world games that kind of let you do anything and go anywhere like Breath of the Wild, it's a little less common, but just barely. At number four, uh, drinking water to restore health from drowning. Like, restoring health in games already strains logic pretty badly. In real life, eating a ham, whether in sandwich form or just like a, a ham, it's not going to suture up like an open wound and stop the bleeding. But there's something especially ridiculous about losing health from drowning in a game like Fallout and then drinking water to restore that health. And I don't mean like doing it after you've come up for air. I'm talking about about drinking water mid drowning and it somehow restores health. Honestly, doing any action that involves putting something in your mouth while you're drowning seems pretty ridiculous, but the fact that water is killing you and healing you simultaneously, it's completely wild. Like, it's obviously just something that happens because they chose to make it so water heals you. Water is a life giving substance, like, that is not wrong, but there are obviously situations, contextually speaking, that that doesn't make any sense. I, I still have a, a good laugh over it and obviously they make the game more playable because you need to be able to restore health in a game still and number three, being able to stand on the edge of platforms with like your pinky toe and platformers, you know, like where you can stand with most of your body off of a platform, but the game still acts like you're standing on it. It makes no sense at all if you stop to think about it for a second, but it is so great. Like it's especially obvious in older games, particularly Mega Man games for the NES. This is something I did for fun there. I mean, it did have a strategic reason to do, but not even because of it. It looks silly and I always thought it was fun. Like if you're making a really tough off platformer developers better make it forgiving in some way and one way they can do that is by making it so that you only fall off a platform when your entire body is off of it games that don't do this also are annoying as hell like there's nothing worse than a platformer falling off of a ledge because of a mistimed jump and like i said not like an easy platform like tough one it's not as noticeable in certain games but like in Mega Man or the original super mario brothers where you're standing this ultra wide stance it's really funny to see him stand with just one toe on the platform holding on for dear life and number two, Link somehow swapping between iron boots in water to float or sink. Inventories in general in games don't make a lot of sense. Like how on earth is Link able to haul around this junk anyhow? There's a lot of it. But maybe the most obvious and funny bit of nonsense logic in the series is that you can put on iron boots to sink and then take them off to float. At first, makes total sense. But uh, yeah, the iron boots just disappear. Like if you use logic, Link is just taking them off and putting them in his backpack, which the 
the amount of weight that Link has shouldn't be changing, given that. On and off, those boots should be making him sink, because they're on his person, regardless. But somehow the act of taking them off just makes Link lighter. They're less iron boots more than gravity boots, I guess. It's Legend of Zelda, so we can just call them magic. But with a name as mundane as iron boots, you're gonna assume that it's because the boots are heavy. It's obviously just a gameplay mechanic so you can sink or swim, depending on how you need to get through an area. But logically, it obviously doesn't make sense. Is that area fun? Yes. And finally, at number one, it's being able to do crazy stunts and battlefield. Part of the fun of this series is how you can pull off these insane stunts that would not be possible in real life under any circumstances. Like one of the most ridiculous is the old jump out of a flying vehicle, shoot the enemy with a rocket, land back into an airplane and fly away type thing. Like there's so many things just like that. They're just utterly impossible in real life. Like where do you store an RPG in the cockpit of a fighter jet? How do you manage to fall slow enough that you can land back in the plane everything is totally bonkers about it but damn it is so cool it looks so cool it feels so satisfying when you pull this stuff off and uh, like battlefield isn't really supposed to be a realistic depiction of warfare so the fact they let you get away with insane stunts like this probably one of the best parts about it Max. and that's all for today leave us a comment let us know what you think if you like this video click like if you're not subscribed now's a great time to do so we upload brand new videos every day of the week best way to see them first is of course a subscription so click subscribe don't forget to enable all notifications and as always we thank you very much for watching this video i'm falcon you can follow me on twitter falcon the hero we'll see you next time right here on game ranks